Well, some bit of give back is what we're seeing from the highs of the day, and this is being led by a couple of these financials. So we have LD Finance Holdings, so the broader market's not doing too well. Yes Bank as well, currently sitting at the low point of the day for the Nifty, very close to that 10,750 odd mark. But one stock which is at the high point of the day is Hindustan Unilever. So we'll keep an eye out on how this space pans out going forward. The stock on our radar right now is Balma Lorry. Remember, it's a government owned logistics company, debt free, with almost 450 crores of cash on the books uh, and uh, gave a dividend of almost 7.5 uh, rupees per share as well. So that's 7.5% odd in terms of a dividend yield. But what's stopping the growth is a whole host of things. And to detail all those numbers, we have Mr. Basu of Balma Lori joining us, uh, a rare media interview. Thanks a lot, Mr. Basu, for joining in. You know, you said that the fourth quarter did see an impact of the lockdown, but now we're towards the end of the first quarter, in the middle of the second quarter. If you could tell us how did volumes pan out in the first quarter itself and your outlook for the remainder of this year for all your container freight station businesses. Yeah, the first quarter, in fact, uh, you have talked about the volumes. Volumes in the manufacturing sector was badly affected in the first quarter. Uh, but uh, as you, uh, you also personally mentioned about container freight stations, container freight stations uh, performed well in the first quarter, I must say, uh, because there was the cargo was uh, locked up in the uh, container freight stations. So it was almost uh, having a high utilization. So first quarter results for CFS uh, had been good. But uh, overall, uh, going forward, I think now we have started uh, the economy is opening up. And I think uh, from third quarter onwards, uh, we should be doing well. Uh, but only one caveat is that uh, our travel and uh, tourism business is now absolutely uh, almost at a zero level because all the airlines are not operating. Uh, international airlines are not operating. The domestic also various sectors are closed. And the people are quite scared of moving around. So that is uh, have been badly hit, I must say. With this first, uh, we don't see any recovery in the first half. So we are uh, expecting from first of October, I think things will normalize in this sector. But other than that, I think things are picking up, and uh, I wish uh, from the second uh, from the second quarter onwards we'll see significant improvements. And uh, third quarter onwards, I see a, a recovery to almost a previous level, apart from travel and tourism. Travel and tourism uh, is a sector which will take uh, probably an one year uh, to revive. That's what the, all the market specialists are talking about. Okay, let's quantify this then, Mr. Basu. The picture that you're yeah. painting to us is that the first half of the year is going to be challenging, but the second half of the year could be much better. Now, last year, that's an FY20. If I look at it, you did revenues of roughly around 1,550 crores. That was a Correct. degrowth of close to around 14%. Now, given the challenges Correct. that you have up uh, mm -hmm. before you, what kind of yeah. a revenue degrowth are you working with? For this year, uh, that's for FY21. If you could give us a broad range, worst case scenario, best case scenario, what could those numbers be? Yes, uh, it can be uh, looking at a, a degrowth of another, another around 15% or so. Mm. So they were from the last year level. All right. Uh, uh, you know, you did say that travel and tourism will take at least a year to recover. CFS business has been doing well. One of the big growth triggers for Barman and Lorry has been the big capex that you all had lined out a couple of years ago. 400 crore capex, temperature controlled warehouses in Mumbai, and NCR and Hyderabad. So if you could uh, tell us a little about... Go ahead, sir. Uh, about the uh, temperature control warehouses. Uh, uh, about the temperature control warehouses, uh, uh, the, uh, it's a reason going uh, on the fourth one, and the other three are operating uh, quite well. Yeah, we didn't get that point, uh, Mr. Basu. If you could just update us about the tem temperature controlled warehouses that you had planned in Delhi, Hyderabad, and Mumbai. You were saying that they are operational. You had put 400 crores in it, I, I believe. Operations that are right. Uh, they are doing very well. Uh, Bombay is picking up. It is uh, yet to pick up. It will probably pick up uh, probably in this quarter. And so, but this year they are doing well. Uh, we are now going in for uh, the fourth one in Bhuvaneshwar, mm. where work is in full swing, uh, which should be uh, commissioned by the end of this uh, fiscal year. What is the revenue potential from this? Uh, 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 know, each, yeah. Each of this uh, uh, temperature control warehouses normally gives a revenue in a year of around 10 crores. Uh, that's the turnover. And the uh, profit uh, expected is around uh, 1.5 crores from each of the uh, uh, temperature control barrels. 
All right, a little about your steel drums business. What's the revenue contribution coming in from there? And I believe you had a market share of about 35% in that industry. Yeah, yeah. Have you have, increased uh, your market have, share? Uh, yeah, we have, uh, we have continued with the same level of market share. Um, uh, apart from the first two months when it was badly because of lockdown, uh, things are back to absolutely normal level. So I think uh, apart from that disruption slightly, which will probably bring down the overall volumes for the year. Otherwise, this, uh, that is doing well. In, uh, Okay, all right. Uh, you know, just shifting focus away, Mr. Basu, from, uh, uh, you know, your operational performance, wanted to get a couple of details. One being, is there any update in terms of privatization of the company? Uh, if you could give us an update out there. And also, you know, various reports yes. indicate that you have some non-core assets, a land bank. If you could quantify that. Yes, sir. Uh, you okay, I think we have uh, got him on a bit of a scratchy line now at a crucial juncture. Oh, right. Okay, all right. Mm. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, you're back with us. Mm. So I had two questions yeah, yeah. for you. Yeah. One was on yeah. potential privatization of the company. The second yeah. is, uh, you know, you have some non-core assets, land, yeah. uh, uh, etc. So if you could quantify those assets. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, in fact, uh, I have uh, no uh, information about the privatization at this point of time. I don't think anything uh, concrete is going on at this point, although uh, today's newspaper also talks about... Uh, uh Uh, assets, non-core assets, uh, we don't have any non-core assets. Uh, uh, in fact, um, that, uh, all, the assets are being, uh, all assets are being utilized. Uh, so we don't have any uh, special land bank or anything like that. So no plans in terms of privatization. You have not heard anything so far and you don't have any non-core assets in terms of land bank That's as true. well. That's Good it. to talk to you, sir. Thanks so much for joining in. Uh, looking forward to touching base later this year as well. So maybe a 15% degrowth is what we could be bracing ourselves for on Balmer Lorry uh, for this year after degrowing by close to around 14-15% in the past year as well. But the markets have come off the high point of the day. So let's slip into a short break. You come back. Prakash Gabo will join us with some trading strategies. Stay with us.